Have you ever wanted to get rock hard and shredded abs? Well, this video is for you. For 15 easy payments of $9.99. <laughs> Alright. David E. Mosquita back again, and we're gonna be talking about libido enhancement drugs, also known as erectile dysfunction drugs. So the two today that we're gonna be talking about are the most popular. This is gonna be Viagra and Cialis. I'm gonna jump into Cialis or Tadalafil first because I personally believe this is the most beneficial, especially when we're talking about the bodybuilding world and longevity purposes. The major differences between Cialis and Viagra is the half-life difference between the two. On script, you're going to be talking about Cialis up to 20 milligrams per day and Viagra up to 100 milligrams per day. So you can use them for different uses. Tadalafil is known also as the weekend pill. And the reason why it's known as a weekend pill is one pill has a 36 hour half-life, whereas Viagra has a two hour half-life. The dosings for these vary depending on what uses you're actually utilizing it for. And I also want to preface, these drugs do not enhance your libido. You may get an artificial enhancement due to the fact that your erection is now more readily available, so to say. The way that these work mechanically, they basically don't allow the blood back out of the penis when you are aroused. You get a better erection from these. We'll talk about two different things that can actually help with libido at the end of this, so you'll wanna wait to hear about those. But there is a lot that goes into libido, such as daily stress, sleep, hormones, and other things. But there are two things in particular that do help libido. I do do a deep dive on these two in particular, and you can click right here to see it, but we're gonna jump into these at the end as well. Tadalafil was originally designed to be a blood pressure medication. It was never legalized for the blood pressure benefits that you get from this because the half-life is so long that there was getting some overlap. They did, however, legalize this for erectile dysfunction. There are also other benefits from this drug besides just the blood pressure benefits. Those of you who are on performance-enhancing drugs, the blood pressure benefits are extremely important for you since I truly believe that this is the underlying, I hate to say, killer for many of these bodybuilders but killer nonetheless. Many people don't monitor blood pressure, so it's something that I would highly recommend doing. Tadalafil can help in this. It can also help with BPH, benign prostate hyperplasia. This is simply enlargement of the prostate. Another drug that can be utilized here is finasteride, which most people just know for hair loss. Tadalafil has very, very low side effects and will not cause erectile dysfunction issues such as finasteride, and you will still get benefits for the prostate inflammation. Blood thinning effects are phenomenal from Tadalafil, and also you'll get a nice pump in the gym. A lot of people talk about Cialis or Viagra for pumps in the gym. Now, what we can talk about is what are the dosings and what are you currently using it for? Five milligrams of Cialis over a 36 hour half-life is probably not gonna age you all that much the bedroom. 10 milligrams, however, to 20 milligrams may really benefit you if you're looking for erectile dysfunction issues and potentially prostate inflammation and blood pressure benefits. Five milligrams per day is probably enough for you. But when you're talking about erections and really wanting to get, let's just say rock hard, Viagra at 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams is the prescribed dosage within a two hour period of time is much higher than Cialis. So you'll get up and ready to rock and roll really quickly. It's your system within about 20 minutes or so and you're ready to roll. When you're talking about performance enhancement benefits out of these drugs, Cialis due to the blood thinning effects over a long period of time can help deliver better nutrients. Again, I think this drug is better for bodybuilding. Really very little side effects with it, especially at low dosages and so many benefits to it, especially over long periods of time, not even just short use. We have tons of macro data on this. Another really weird one, and this is going to make you cringe, there was a study done where they took a hammer and hit rats on their penises. Well, it actually healed their broken penises or began to heal their broken penises. So if you're just looking for a quick pump in the gym, maybe Viagra, but Viagra may be a solution for people who genuinely have erectile dysfunction. The issue with Viagra is the flushing that comes from it, head pressure all over and stuff like that. So it's cost and analysis, maybe find the dosage that works for you. I personally, have used both. I do not like Viagra as an erectile dysfunction drug. In fact, it limited my ability when I stopped using it to get erections. I took it two days or three days in a row because I ran out of my Cialis. And sure enough, I took the 100 milligrams at first or made me extremely flush in the face, almost like I was having a headache the entire time. 
I decided to reduce it down to 50 milligrams. 50 milligrams hardly did anything for my erection personally. And on top of that, I had issues getting an erection afterwards. And this is coming from that has never had erectile dysfunction issues at all. Then Cialis, I can come off of it and nothing changes for me. Two completely different feelings and sensations. I will personally never use Viagra again. There may be a, a use for it, such as pumping up backstage where you need to get the effects and the pump ASAP before you step out on stage. The Alice can technically do the same exact thing. You'll figure out what works for you. Do any of you out there use either Cialis or Viagra or have a preference over the two. I already shared my experience. I'm curious to hear about yours. Now, what are some reasons why Tadalafil would be awesome, especially if you're cycling up? So let's talk about having better orgasms, better sensitivity down there, and what may be coming in the mix. Many of you know about prolactin issues when it comes to trend. You hear about trendic. You just can keep on going, right? But it's very difficult to get off. This is due to the rise in prolactin levels that has been correlated with trend. It is a nor 19 so it is a progesterone based drug so you get the increase in sex drive and you're also getting an increase in prolactin so how are we going to lower those prolactin levels some of you may have heard of caber goline caber is an extremely potent drug to lower prolactin levels very quickly it increases your sense of well-being in the bedroom by increasing sensitivity and it will also allow you to get off so maybe you get off a few more times rather than just one time and being done and out combined with tadalafil to keep you going when you want to have that urge and that sensation to get going. What are some other things that most people don't correlate prolactin to is going to be kratom and marijuana. Again, these are so strong that capergoline almost may need to come into the equation in these instances. If you're off of all these, which you can't run trend year round, so please don't run trend year round to boost that libido, you can do something like a vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 is amazing for lowering prolactin levels. One, other drugs aren't involved raising those prolactin levels up. So yes, those two other compounds, kratom and marijuana can reduce down sex drive and sensation. So let's talk about what those two things are that can boost your libido. There are two peptides in particular that have been created to actually aid in female libido more than anyone else. This was melanotan 2, which in the bodybuilding world, we know it because it helps you with getting tan and PT-141, melanotan 2 is non-FDA approved, whereas PT-141 in 2019 was approved by the FDA. If you wanna find out more reasoning behind this, go ahead and click up here. I do a deep dive into both of these and how they actually function and what are the side effects behind them.